Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Five Friday it is. Five and welcome Friday. back, listener. So today we're going to be recapping our earlier episode from this week, which was so much fun for me. I it, it basically became a love letter to Southwest. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If anybody watching this knows anybody at Southwest, hook us up. Yeah. Let, us, us let up. them know that the Five Guys love them. We do. And I could, I guess, use more drink coupons to give to people <laughs> um, on my flights. I don't know. That's awesome. If you guys don't know what he's talking about, go back and watch the last podcast from Monday. It's a classic. It's 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 the best credit card hack that he knows. Yeah, no, no. That the South Wales Companion Pass definitely is my best credit card hack. Like for a single thing, like, mm-hmm. like one one hack, that that would be it. That's it. That's yeah. it. If I was but starting out, I'd probably go there. Today we're recapping it. So we're gonna recap it again, just in case yeah. you missed something, just to make sure that we cement this new information in your mind, because. I know when we talk about credit cards, we're talking about all these points, talk about all these different spend limits, yep. companion pass, 135. I don't know what any of this means. Gets 524. Confusing. It gets confusing. So it's we're going to recap it again, try to say it inside of a different way, and hopefully it helps to make it a little bit easier and palatable for you. You know, I was actually thinking about this. Like, the Friday is not just a recap, but it's an easier listen. Oh, yeah, no. You know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you have to like us more and like mm. be okay with like <laughs> yeah. our banter. That's it, true. If, if you listen to us, you're like, I can't stand these people. I just want their information. Then I would not listen to Fridays. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Fridays, are, Fridays, are, Fridays are for the boys. Yeah, it's for the boys. It's yeah. just for us to hang out, talk, and recap everything for the audience and for ourselves to make sure that we solid, we make this stronger for our minds too because you've never got the Southwest Rewards. So I've, you're learning just I've alongside never, with our audience member here. Still looking for the companion side of the past. But <laughs> anyway... Uh, yeah, we've got a lot to talk about today, which I'm really excited, as Chris and I have been talking about for the last mm, two minutes. Uh, <laughs> we are recapping the companion pass, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Yep. So, first off, we talked about why choose Southwest Airlines. I went in and gave you guys a little bit of a spiel about everyone talks. Should we speed run it? Mad. Go for it. <laughs> I was like, oh, is it going to Oh, we got free bags. Mm-hmm. Two free bags. Two free bags. Flexible. Flexible. I should probably recap. Yes. Not 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 muscle wise. We're not talking about muscles. We're talking about how you can change your flight ten minutes before the flight. Yep. That's you can change or even cancel. Like or even I'm cancel. not even gonna show up. Yeah. Yeah. I, and get all of your money back. I don't know if you know anybody in your life, but my dad is that person where if there's a flight, he'll show up three hours, two hours early. I am that person. You are that person. Well, okay. I'm not as bad anymore. But now that I have the um, now I can go to like Centurion Lounge and stuff, so I like going early because I yeah. go and I eat and I drink. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah, it's so fun. One of my favorite memories is uh, my dad driving my mom and I to the airport, um, and my mom and we're already like we're cutting it. We're cutting it a little close. Oh, you're late or you're? We're not late, but we're not three hours early. Oh, okay. So uh, my mom who. My dad hates stress. Not a big fan of stress, like anybody else. My mom's like, "Could we stop at the mall real quick? <laughs> I just have a pickup." And my dad literally, he's like, he just goes like, "Oh my god!" He's like, "Well, it's your flight. If you miss it, it's your flight. That's a, it's your flight. You're gonna miss your whole trip." <laughs> and it's like, my mom's like, "Yeah, let's stop at the mall. I got a pickup. I got to get a hat." And uh, we ended up stopping. And I was with my dad in the car, and it was like it was like a song. It was like a steam room in there. He's just sweating. Just he's <laughs> just sweating. It was so funny. My dad. My dad's a lot like that way too. My dad is a marine, mm-hmm. so it's you know if you're not five minutes early, you're late. Yeah. It's like that hurry up and wait mentality. <laughs> yeah. Like, all the time, it'd be like we got to get to the movies now. Like yeah. like it doesn't start for another two hours. You got to get a good seat. Like I'm pretty sure there's other people in the movie theaters right now. Like we can't go in that theater. We gotta get a good seat. <laughs> we'll go. We'll wait. <laughs> go watch the ending of the last movie for this next movie. It's perfect. Uh, I love it. So uh, we we're talking about flexibility of mm-hmm. changing your flight ten minutes before or canceling it altogether. We talked about baggage. Two uh, two free check bags or yeah, two free check bags plus a carry on plus a personal item. Crazy. So four bags. Four bags. Crazy. Uh, we also talked about the point value. Mm-hmm. It's really good. You want yeah. to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so with most reward systems, it's all dependent on where you're flying to. So you're flying to like a high traffic area, then the points aren't going to go as far as if you're flying to, I don't know, Toledo. Yeah. Um, versus like Ohio. Yeah, versus like, yeah, if you're going to like Miami versus Akron, like it's going to be very, very different under the point system. But for Southwest, it's not like that. The points are actually valued at 1.3 to 1.5 cent per point. So let's say 1.4 in general. So meaning... 10,000 points is going to net you uh, 135 to $150. And yeah. it's pretty much going to stay consistent through the year. I'm not actually sure why it's 1.3 to 1.5. Mm-hmm. That's just kind of the way it is. Yeah. You flame in Akron, Ohio? 
I've never flown to Akron, Ohio. I'm just trying to think of like a small place. Dang. You're telling me Akron, Ohio is not the same as Miami? That's crazy. I'm sure Akron's beautiful. I don't remember. Sure, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's this bit that um, I think it was in uh, Trainwreck. You ever saw that movie? Mm -hmm. It's with LeBron James. He's in it. Uh, and he's like, uh, why don't you ever come visit me in Miami? Or he's like, why don't you why don't you ever come visit me in Ohio? He's like, you visit me all the time when I was in Miami. He's like, well, it's Miami. Mm -hmm. He's like, what's wrong with what's wrong with Cleveland? He's like, it's home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's great for the family. <laughs> it's like, it was just like funny. It's like trying to compare Miami and like Ohio. It's just it's funny. Yeah. It's, just, it's funny. It cracks me up a little bit. Uh, we also talked about the power. There's great power in the Southwest Companion Pass. Yeah, I mean the, the I think most people would want to choose Southwest because. If not for the flexibility, mm -hmm. the baggage points, mm -hmm. the points. Like, I think mm -hmm. those three reasons right there are already a good enough reason yeah. to choose Southwest because yeah. you're not having to pay for all these additional fees. You pay for it once, you know what you're going to get. It, it is what it is. But in addition to those amazing perks, mm -hmm. you also have the ability to earn Southwest Companion Pass and basically get 50% off all flights. That's nice. Flights are expensive sometimes. Flights are expensive, especially now. You know, the thing I like about Southwest Companion Pass, and the reason that I really want to share it with our with our listener, mm -hmm. is that unfortunately I never want people to have to make the decision that I see so many families having to make of like, oh, we need to go back home for this event, but we only have enough money for one of us to to go. Mm -hmm. So sometimes husbands and wives or spouses are going to have to separate, and one of them is going to have to go, and one of them has to stay home. Mm -hmm. With the Southwest Companion Pass, you don't have to make that decision, especially during the holidays. You yeah. want to go home and see your family, but you can't afford it. That's awful. With this pass, you're both able to go. Yeah, you know, for what would normally cost just the price of one of you. Definitely, being a devil's advocate here for just a second. Mm -hmm. If you were in a situation where you couldn't afford for both of you to fly already, you probably wouldn't be able to qualify. Maybe you probably wouldn't be able to qualify for the requirements to get the pass anyway. Oh, that's a good point. You think? That's a good point. You know? Maybe. Maybe, but it, I guess it depends on your monthly expenses. Mm -hmm compounded like like over three months because that's like the window yeah and then a lot of people sometimes you know during the holidays that things get tighter mm -hmm. true you know than, than, than it normally is like during maybe during the middle time of the year the summertime like oh we're making money we're not spending mm -hmm. as much it's all good but during the holidays things get a little bit tighter true you that's know? very true that's very true who knows uh, yeah who knows you know yeah and, and the nice thing like it's so easy to start all you have to do is just open up a southwest rapid rewards account at southwest.com and then just Put in your email address, create a password, and you're good to start earning points pretty much immediately. There's no having to send a letter or anything like that. You, <laughs> you have to send a, a carrier pigeon yeah, and be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I want my Southwest Pass. You see a bird fly over, it's like, is that my, is that my letter? Is it coming back? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really as easy as just going to the website and signing up. And then you get an account number assigned to you. Um, yeah. yeah, it's simple, simple. Simple, simple. Yeah. And then after that, we talked about the power of the Southwest Companion Pass. and why everyone likes it. And what the Southwest Companion Pass really does is it allows you to name a guest. And you can actually change that guest up to three times per year mm -hmm. and have that person travel. Whenever you buy a ticket for yourself, you can add them on for free. The only thing they pay for is the taxes and fees, which for domestic flights is $5.60. Mm, okay. So you can take a $400 flight from here to New York, you pay the $400, your companion pays $5.60. And then you can go from there to Miami and then Miami to San Diego. Damn. So normally that'd be $1,200 times two, so $2,400. Now you're only having to pay half of that. Dang. Plus $6.50 or $5.60 times three. I love it. I love it. That's a hack. Yeah. I love that. So anyone, I mean, the Southwest Companion is really for anyone who likes to travel, mm -hmm. likes to travel with somebody, yeah. and likes to save money. True. I can't think of anyone else who would like to be like, no, I don't want that. I don't want that, yeah. 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 And outside of the money, too, it also doubles your Southwest points because mm -hmm. you can use the points and then the person still gets to fly for free. Yeah, because once you earn the, the required points, the 135,000 points, they don't just disappear. Mm -hmm. You yep. get access to the pass and you get to keep your points. And yeah. you can use the points towards flights. Yep. It's crazy. Win, 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 win. Yes. All the way down the board. Steve Wynn would be proud. Uh, we also talked about... What earns, else? Yeah, earning qualifications. Earning qualifications. Yeah, I, we talked about, oh, yeah, the Southwest Sound, the, the Companion Pass sounds amazing, but how do I do it? How does it, how does it work? I know, and that's difficult because you have to earn 135,000 points to qualify yep. for the Southwest Companion Pass for both 2023 and at this time for 2024, unless there's an announcement that's made anytime soon. And I heard that Chase sometimes offers a, because Chase holds the, they're the ones that yeah. do the card through, uh, through Southwest. 
Sometimes they'll offer the companion pass as like an intro offer. Yeah, I mean, that's Southwest and, and Chase kind of making that offer together. I found that that normally comes in February, March of mm -hmm. times of the year, where instead of having to meet a minimum spend of $3,000 to get 75,000 points, you meet that minimum $3,000, you get companion pass for the remainder of that year, mm -hmm. which is a really good deal for some people. Do you th would I have to have the business card too? Nope, you'll have to get one of the cards. So it's it's a simpler way, but it doesn't get you the maximum benefit because if you do the, both the business card and the personal card, you actually get Southwest Companion Pass for two years if you do it right strategically. Mm -hmm. But with, with the, this way, it's with only the business be, one with both of them, the personal and the business, you get it for the remainder of the year and the next year. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But when you do it, just when they're having that special offer of like sign up, minimum spend, get Companion Pass, it's only for that year. You're not. There's no way you're going to be able to get it for two years. Not even if. No, yeah, there's just no way. Mm -hmm. no. no, not that I can think of. So let's say that came up in February. You think I should take that deal? I mean, honestly, for you right now, I think it would be a better deal for you to mm -hmm. get a personal and a, and a, uh, and and a, a business. Because you can spend $6,000 this month pretty easily with yeah. you, especially moving in January. Yeah, that's true. I think that would be best for you. Okay. But, and also, we don't know if they're going to have that offer. They have had yeah, it in the yeah. past two years. I don't know if it's going to be in, or this year. It might might not be. Okay. I don't know what the future holds. Damn, not an oracle. <laughs> I wish. That'd be cool, though. Yeah, and then we also talk about different ways to accumulate points to earn towards the earn towards that one hundred thirty-five thousand to qualify for the Southwest Companion Pass. Mm -hmm. You can also trigger Southwest Companion Pass by flying a hundred flights through Southwest in one year, meaning that you're flying twice a week. Yeah, there and back. So that's not going to be feasible for most people. No, that's not feasible for me. For sure. No. <laughs> no. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, there's a bunch of ways to accumulate points. Number one, you can pay for your flights with cards. Mm -hmm. If you have a rubber rewards point, if you have a rubber rewards number. You're that's a, that's one. a tough I one. know, it's so it's hard. It's so tough. Um, it's a tongue twister there. It really is. Yeah, if you have that rapid rewards number, then you're going to have to get one point per dollar. If you have a credit card, maybe two points per dollar. If you have the Premier Southwest credit card, four points per dollar spend. Mm -hmm. You can also book hotels through Southwest. You can shop online. You can dine with Southwest. There's a bunch of different ways, but the best way by far is by doing a Chase co-branded Southwest card intro offer. Mm. Saying, I'm gonna sign up for this credit card as a new user of yes. the card. I've never had this card before, and by never, I mean in two years. Gotcha. Um, so when do you cancel your card? My Southwest card? Yeah. Because I know uh, you and your wife are playing two-player mode. Yeah. So after two years, I'll cancel it, and I'll go to the opposite card that I didn't have. Mm, what do you mean the, the opposite card? Oh, so, so you did the cheaper business card. Yeah, I'll go to the cheaper business gotcha. card. Gotcha. And that's cheaper because it's like it's 200 a year for 100 a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I just switch them back and forth. That's oh, my okay. plan right now until okay. things change. Things might change. I wish, you know what you need? Hmm? You need a giant chalkboard, maybe like in the garage or something, where you can like write everything down and just like get like real. Have you seen that meme? I have a spreadsheet. Oh, I have a Google spreadsheet that I keep all my stuff in. That's nice. Yeah. I, Damn. Yeah, I track all my stuff through spreadsheets. It like says like when this card's going to renew, what the bonuses are on the card. I'm telling you, you how would, much I pay for it. You would love. You would love Notion. Like, like remember how I showed you earlier? I just use Google Docs. Oh man. I'm telling is you. Notion's better than Google? Notion is the sweatiest of sweaties. But it's also I have to pay for it, and like I don't like paying for things. No, Notion's free. Notion's is free. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that. It's free. I had you pay for that. There is a paid version of it, which I don't understand what it's for, but yeah. Is that the one that has like the AI software? That's what it has the AI uh, and, like, and more storage for one file, but yeah, I love Notion. Sh big shout out to the app Notion. I basically planned my entire life in there. Sponsor us. <laughs> Literally, I'm there. Sponsor us, guys. We'll talk to you guys. And then after that, we move on to segment four, which is avoiding pitfalls mm -hmm. of the Southwest Companion Pass. And I know that so many people, they, they want all the shortcuts to get the Southwest Companion Pass. Yeah. And you have to remember that you know, just like in your journey to fly, like this isn't always going to be the guy. They're, they're, it's not the tortoise and the hare. Like no. you're going to get it. Oh, yeah, you're going to get it. You can't rush it. No, you can't rush it. So can't rush it. we talked about ways to avoid. Number one is you cannot transfer points from, say, the Chase Ultimate Rewards to Southwest to trigger Companion Pass. Correct. You'll get those Southwest points, but they will not earn towards 135,000. Yeah, and you, you also can't buy your way. Nope, you can't buy your way because you can buy Southwest points, but you can't do that. It won't trigger the Southwest Companion Pass. Mm -mm. You also have to remember, like we said, you can only have one of those cards every two years and get that sign-in bonus. Yep. And you can only have one personal card, one business card at a time. So you can't get two personal cards and get those 75,000 on both of them. They're not gonna get approved. No. And there's also the Chase 524 rule saying that Chase, if you have five cards open in 24 months, 
the next car that you apply for for Chase, you're automatically going to get denied. So if you opened uh, five cards in the last 24 months, they're not going to allow it. Nope. But you can have more than five cards. They just can't have been opened mm -hmm. in the last 24 months. Yeah, so if you say you have cards from like 10 years ago, four years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's on a rolling calendar, right? Mm -hmm. So say you had... You have 524, and then you bought, you had one credit card. Right now it's December of 2023. Mm -hmm. So you had a card that you got in January of 2021. As of February of 2024, you'll be able, you'll now be at 424. Yeah. You'll be able to apply for a Chase card. Bingo. One big thing to think about is that business credit cards do not count towards Chase's 524 rule. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. But if I have five, if I open five credit cards, they're still going to deny me. Yes, they're going to deny you, but they don't count towards adding the number up. So it counts, but it doesn't count. It counts, but it doesn't count. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, what else do we talk about? After that, we kind of moved into the companion pass utilizations and some ways to maximize it. So I really gave a step by step, step by step guide. Once you earn the Southwest Companion Pass, after you earn your 135,000 points, and the way that we recommend doing that is you open up one of the preferred car or one of the personal cards, which currently, and this might change, has 75,000 points if you spend $3,000 in the first three months. Mm -hmm. So you can go ahead and do that, spend $3,000, you get 75,000 points deposited to your Southwest account. Yeah. Then you, or simultaneously, or then, you open up a business credit card account through Southwest, and Chase is not the IRS. They're very lenient on who can open up credit cards. If you've ever like walked the dog, um, if you ever babysat a friend's cat, yep. if you drive for Uber, you you are a business owner. Yep. So you can go ahead and apply for that, meet that minimum spend, which for right now are either going to be three thousand or five thousand dollars, depending on which card you get. You're going to get either sixty thousand or eighty thousand points deposited into your account, and there you go. You've triggered Companion Pass for the remainder of the year you earned it and the entirety of the next year. Bingo. So step-by-step -step guide, you now get that companion pass. You get your, your email from Southwest saying, congratulations, you've earned your Southwest pass. Who do you want to name as your beneficiary? Yeah. You're going to go inside there, name the person that you want to, that you want to put on, um, who's going to fly with you for free. Now, whenever you go into Southwest and you're booking your flights, mm -hmm. after you book your flight, you're going to be able to go back and look at that flight log of all the flights you have. Once you go onto that flight that you want to choose, it's going to have a nice little button that says add companion. You're going to click yes. And then it's going to say this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you only have one person named. Name that person, pay the $5.60, the, the taxes and fees. And now that person has their ticket. It is really as easy as that. They've, simple. It's the simplest thing in the world. Simple. Super simple. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't get easier than that. No. I mean, I feel like that's pretty straightforward. It is. And there's so many ways to maximize your trips to get the companion pass. I mean, Think about it. If you're flying with your significant other, that's 50% off. Like you were going to mm -hmm. pay for it regardless. Mm -hmm. But say you don't have a significant other, like, like yourself, you want to just fly with a friend. Maybe you want to fly with me. Sure. Yeah, we can be friends. We'll fly wherever you want to go. <laughs> exactly. And then instead of, you know, obviously you're not going to just pay for me. So yeah. you can say, hey, Chris, can you get the rental car? Could you get the yeah, hotel? Yeah, we'll split it up. Or worst comes to worst, could you pay me 50% of my ticket price? Bingo. Or you can just lie to me and say, hey, I had to pay this much for it and tell me how. <laughs> Oh, that's so evil. Oh my gosh, yeah. I would look it up though. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you probably could get that, somebody. That's like that. really funny though. That's really funny. Yeah, yeah the ticket was two fifty. Yeah. Sorry, man. So, yeah, this is really expensive. I don't know. If it's it's expensive. My okay. gas in, prices. In this transaction, I made money. Yeah. Oh gas prices, I guess. Yeah. And then one thing that I really love about <laughs> or really utilizing the Southwest Companion Pass is that that hundred thirty five thousand points that you had to earn to even get the companion pass, yeah. you still get to keep those points. You can use those for the flights. Yeah, you can use those for the flights, and that's $1,700 to $2,000 worth of value that you still get to use at a half-off price because you get to fly your other person with you for free. Dude, it is really it. I mean, so I, I brought it up. I have saved, just in 2024, I don't even know how much I've saved over the last three years of having Southwest Companion Pass, yeah. but for next year and the amount of flights we've, we have 14 flights booked currently, mm -hmm. and we're in December. Yeah. So 14 flights already for next year. That's crazy. We're probably gonna add more. There and back? Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's seven, 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 seven trips. Seven trips okay. already booked for next year and yeah. growing in December. Okay. At this time, we've only spent $400, about $400. And had we not had Southwest Companion Pass, had we not had all the points, we yeah. would have spent over $4,200. Oh my gosh. You can go on so many That's trips. That's nearly like a 10%. We, we spent 10% yeah. of what we would have spent had we not had these. Now we need a hotel hack. I have hotel hacks. You have a hotel hack? Yeah, I'll talk about that later. I, I love it. I, I love hotel, it. I have hotel hacks. I love it. I need I need a good hotel hack. Yeah, I got hotel hacks. Oh, I can teach you that. 
Um, not as good. Not as good as our plane hack from last episode. <laughs> not, not as good as our plane <laughs> hack, but it's still a hack. Yeah. Um, not to mention the drink coupons. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Southwest. It's awesome. a small bonus. It's, but it's a small bonus. Man, there, there's so many reasons. Just like I want to fly Southwest every time. Like yeah. I don't get why everyone doesn't fly Southwest. It doesn't make sense. I don't get it. I, I understand that. Like oh, I have to line up and I don't get to choose my seat. But I actually taught everyone how to choose your seat. Yeah. The, see, before I knew Chris, I flew on Southwest. And I may or may not have uh, forgotten to, uh, dare I say, check in for the flight. Oh, that's going to mess up. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, I was like the second to last person on the plane Oh, with my mom. You know, we we're trying to find a seat and it's just like, you get to the end and you're like, there's no seats. How does this happen? <laughs> you're sitting in the bathroom. You're sitting in the bathroom and have fun. Yeah, so in yeah. Southwest there's A, B, and C boarding groups. Yeah. So A it means you get to choose your window. Yeah. B means you get to choose the aisle. C stands for center. You're sitting in the center room. <laughs> Yeah. You're sitting between two people that you do not know. Dude, I was in the T row, the toilet row. Ooh, yeah. it's no fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we also <laughs> talked about the best ways to maximize the Southwest Companion Pass. That yeah. most, like I said, whenever you earn Southwest Companion Pass, you earn it through the year that you got it mm-hmm. and the entirety of the next year. Okay. So there is really a way to gamify this. And please listen to here if you listen to any part. Yes. If you get your Southwest cards in late October, early November, but you don't hit the minimum spend limits, that $3,000 or $5,000, mm-hmm. until January of the next year. Mm-hmm. That means you're going to get all that 135,000 points to trigger companion pass given to you in the next year. You're going to earn it for all of next year and the year after. It's oh, crazy. And then you take it to another step. And that if you play it two-player mode, meaning that you have a significant other, a spouse, a best friend, whatever, you can do Southwest Companion Pass. Name your significant other, your best friend. Yeah. They're going to, you're going to have them for two years. And then after two years, they're going to do the exact same thing. Then you get to re-trigger your Southwest Companion Pass because it's been two years. You can now re-sign up for bonuses. Then you get to take it over again and vice versa. And we get to play this game infinitely and basically get to fly 50% off till the end of days or until Southwest watches the five guys cuts and say our that, bird. that. Cuts our Cuts our wings. Yeah, until Southwest realizes that there's too many people playing this game. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Well, and when that happens, tune in the five guys and we'll figure it out. Exactly. We'll cross that bridge together. And then after that, I shared with you my secret mm-hmm. of secrets. When you fly Southwest, you do need to be mindful. You do actually have to check in 24 hours ahead of time. You That's can cool. add early bird check-in that'll do it for you automatically. Um, it just costs money. I even normally don't. I just set a reminder on my phone saying at this time, yeah. all my, my calendar goes off saying, hey, check in for your flight. Yeah, I do Checking that real five quick. minutes, four minutes, three minutes. <laughs> yeah. countdown. I'm sitting there, refresh, refresh, <laughs> refresh, <laughs> refresh. Yeah. There it is, got it. Bam. But it's really important that in, whenever you book with Southwest, you can just mm-hmm. book the I want to get away. That's the cheapest one. Mm-hmm. You can also upgrade to the business class one oh. that'll give you automatic A1 through 15 boarding. That's nice. But that also comes at a cost. It comes mm-hmm. at like an additional, it's usually like two times the price of the want to get away. So mm-hmm. that's really expensive. So I found a hack in order to not have to get that and still get the A1 through 15. What you do is you wait to check in. Mm -hmm. At the time of check-in, it'll ask you, do you want to upgrade to priority boarding, meaning groups A1 through 15? You just press yes at that time, and then it's normally between 30 and $50 is what I found, Mm -hmm. Um, and then you just upgrade to A1 through 15 right there. Mm. It's substantially cheaper. Rather than paying like $200 to upgrade your flight ticket yeah. and get on that priority pass, I just do it at the time of check-in and just upgrade at that time. And since I'm flying with my wife, only one of us will purchase that. We'll enter on a group A1 through 15, walk in there, sit down, put your I put my wife's purse next to me, and I just stare at people. Or I act like I'm really, really sick, and they walk by. Or I just pretend like I'm really big, and I like... I remember one time I was getting on the plane, and uh, it's a middle seat. And I was like, is this one open? And the lady's like, like to the window. She's like, yeah, it's open. And I start to like move my bag. She's like, but I don't know if you want to sit there. And I'm like, what? And she like turns around. She has like a, a, a little infant. And I'm like, I'm going to keep looking. And she's Thank like, you. Good idea. <laughs> like I moved with that. It was like a nice wholesome experience. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's nice to uh, choose your own seat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then, then there's so many different hacks that I like to use. I mean, including with Southwest, the one thing that I really like to use, with my Amex Platinum, Mm -hmm. I get $200 credit on airlines. Mm. So it doesn't work towards purchasing tickets because it's not that great, but Mm -hmm. it does work towards purchasing like in-flight upgrades. So that means like... Wi-Fi maybe. No, not Wi-Fi, but drinks. 
That's it. That's, or if like if my, my bag's overpriced or overweight, yeah. I can use it there. But basically, I told you that I get like a bunch of free drink coupons. Yeah, and I'm like, and I have two hundred dollars, and my wife has two hundred dollars of drink spend on Southwest, so we could like get just obliterated every time we fly. Do you even drink? I uh, not really no. No, that's I was I was like I was like I don't think Chris drinks. I I, I drink. I, I mean, every I, now you know. I so here's my issue. Okay, okay. I have a very small bladder. Like I think my bladder is like particularly small compared to other people. Okay. And I I really hate being a nuisance. Uh huh. But I like sitting on the window seat yeah. or the aisle. I don't really care if my like if someone's there. Like I'll sit either way. But I don't like having to go to the bathroom every ten seconds. So if I drink too much, I have to go to the bathroom every ten seconds. It'll run through you. So when I yeah. do fly, I would normally just get um, scotch on the rocks and I just like just drink that straight, Slow, okay. just slowly. Because if I get it with like a mixer, like Coke, yeah. I'll drink the whole thing and then yeah. I have to pee. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, last time we flew to Hawaii for my wedding. Um, like obviously like we're going to be there for two weeks. It's going to be a time, a time of our life. So I'm like, I'm going to get wasted on this plane. <laughs> Sloshed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've done some cool things. Like one, when we were flying for there, um, I had myself, my wife, my brother-in-law, my wife's sister, and my wife's parents. We all got like an entire row because we did the trick yeah. where we both went on there. We both, we both held down a row and then they came by the stewardess. I'm like, I'm going to buy this entire row. Of people have as much alcohol as they want. That's cool. And I gave them my card and. Dang. Did you use up all of them? Um, no. no <laughs> we still, we still, still didn't. Damn, that's crazy. But it's pretty cool to do. That's cool. I can't think of a single drink that I'd be like, because I usually I'm just a water guy. No, oh, yeah. Water and hot cocoa. Okay, uh, I normally like to drink. Um, I normally don't drink sodas, but I'll drink ginger ale when I'm when I'm flying. You For know what? whatever reason, I don't know why. Like Seagram's ginger ale is just really good when I'm flying. You know what? I'm actually mistaken. Whenever I do go flying, uh, the one thing I do love to get is the Bloody Mary mix. Just the mix. Just the mix. It's just, it's just tomato. Sauce. It's like it, well, it's like tomato sauce, but it has more flavor. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. It's like a little spice here. And I I I prefer don't get this for me as a gift because like I only like to drink it on planes. Cause like it's just a nostalgic like it's a plain drink for me. Interesting. Yeah, and I also get the hot cocoa sometimes when we're like landing. I'll be like, do you want a coffee? Like, no. Can I get a hot cocoa? Cause I'm a child. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're like, yes. Nice. Yes, you can, sir. I, I, I don't want that black coffee. Get out of here. No. I want the sweet hot cocoa. So I, I got a I got a buddy who's a, who's a a pilot, mm -hmm. and um, he told me some things about since we we're just talking about Southwest and planes. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I never really understood the the free the pre flight like set up where they're like, you have to put your tray table up and you have to mm -hmm. put all your stuff underneath. It's like, my tray table down is not going to stop the plane from working. It might cut you in half. Yeah. You know, what's the deal here? So I never really understood. I thought it was always like, you have to open up your window before we fly. Like, why? I, I never got any of it. Mm -hmm. So he explained to me everything. So I'm going to explain to the audience because I okay. want to talk about it. Because okay. I thought it was pretty cool. Okay. So, number one, they make you put all of your stuff underneath the seat, right? And that's annoying. It's like, why? It's a power move. Yeah, it's a power move. <laughs> They're just trying to show me what's up. No, the reason they do that is because the most dangerous times of a flight uh -huh. is upon takeoff and landing. Gotcha. So the biggest... When the it, autopilot's not in control. Yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah, when, when ChatGPT isn't, isn't running the plane. <laughs> so in the event that something does go wrong on the runway, the thing that's going to be most dangerous isn't the plane flight. It's going to be stuff flying around the cabin, oh. smacking people. That's why they want it under the seat because there's less of a chance of it getting out and then getting to somebody. That's true. Yeah. The reason that they make you put your, your tray tables upright. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. It's oh, a, yeah. I remember because I remember I asked them, I'm like, I'm like, what's the reason for this? Like, does the plane not work if this thing is down? Because yeah, it's a piece yeah, yeah. of plastic. Yeah, it's plastic. Yeah. What they said is if there's an event that they have to crash and those tray tables are down, people are going to get stuck in their seats and they're going to have to now work not only around unbuckling themselves, getting out of things. But now they're also going to have to work with, there's a tray table in front of them. So that makes sense, right? Tracks, yeah. Makes the last sense. thing was okay. the window being all the way up or down. I haven't heard that one. Oh, really? I've never heard that in one. In Arizona, they don't do it as often. Okay. They, they're supposed to, huh. apparently. But because Arizona gets so hot, they tell you to close it or the... Yeah, yeah. It. They're like when you land, they're like, close the window because it's hot. Yeah, but upon it. opening, when you're flying, they, they ask you to open them. Huh. And the reason that when you're taking off is because if you do crash... Emergency rescue crew, if the windows are open, they can see inside and like see what's going on in the situation. If all the windows are closed, they can't see inside. Damn, that's dark. Yeah, so that's the reason that they do all this stuff. He also told me. Okay. Um, whenever you're flying, he said, especially to Hawaii, always check underneath your seat to make sure that your flotation device is there. Yes. Because he said, especially in Hawaii, people will steal those. 
And then they 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 do a, a thing every between every single flight where they'll like go through and do an audit and check, but like stuff gets missed. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Stuff gets missed all the time. Um, so just check, and if you if that's missing, tell your stewardess, and they'll get you one immediately. That's crazy. Yeah, because like, I guess people are going to Hawaii, and they're like, I don't know how I to swim. Bring my I don't know how to swim. I didn't bring my flotation device. I'll just take this one from the plane. Yeah, I'll just, I'll it just even has a it even has a light. Exactly. I'll return it when I come back. It has a light, and and the, the stewardess told me how to use it. Oh my! I pulled the string. If the string doesn't work, I blow into this tube on my left. <laughs> Oh, dude, I would I would die laughing Could, if I was just at the beach. And oh like, my god! Is that a Southwest <laughs> Airlines like flotation device? What's going on? Yeah, it has like a little flashing thing. Oh man, it's just blowing the whistle too. It's like <laughs> blowing into the. Good lord! So whenever I go to Hawaii, I always go surfing whenever I'm there, yeah. and you know, I, you gotta I, watch out for the flotation. I'm device. all tattooed. I'm all tattooed up. Whenever I go to, last time I was in um, Waikiki. Like Waikiki is like this, the tourist yeah. spot. So I'm out there and I'm surfing and these two ladies come by and I'm like, where are, you, where are your ladies from? They're like, we're from the Midwest, honey. And I was like, Love oh, that. okay. And then they're like, you got to teach us how to surf. And I was like, oh, okay, I teach you. And they're like, but we don't know how to swim. And they were like out far with me on a paddleboard. Bro. So there was two women oh on a paddleboard gosh. out in like the middle of the ocean. I'm like, you guys need to get in immediately. Because if, if one of you falls off, the other one's not going to know what to do. You're not going to be able to bring them up. You're not going to bring them up. Yeah, because you ever fall off a surfboard, it's difficult. It's fall, real. Getting on top of a paddleboard is a lot easier than a surfboard. Uh -huh. I'm like, what are you people doing? Like, That's crazy. The ocean is not a place to learn to swim. It's, not, it's not a game. No. It'll suck you out there. That's crazy. Yeah. As I'm, I mean, I think I saved life. I saved two lives that day when I was like, you need to go in right now. And I followed them in just to make sure. Dang. That's ballsy. Yeah, I gotta yeah. say, that's gutsy. That is. Uh, two yeah. people on a on a paddleboard. I mean, it's a big paddleboard. It's, it's one of the like rubber cheap ones. But like, uh, that's weird. Like, I had a swell come sideways, and they like fell oh, off. Oh yeah. Like, it's very easy to fall off. Yeah, and like the water's clear. Like, so you can see the bottom. Just because you can see the bottom, and like, doesn't you, mean it's close. It doesn't mean it's close. And like, I don't know. Like, I've done drown proofing before. I'm yeah. like, uh, yeah, uh, it's not great. It would suck. I say we get onto the, our viewer mailbag. Let's do it. Let's do it. All righty. Five Friday feedback, viewer mailbag time. One of our favorite times of the week. Subject line, what do we got? A young professional, 22, looking for a better credit card to utilize for better rewards and benefits. I love it, it's on topic. It's very on topic. All righty, let's, let's do this. All right, howdy, five guys. And you know, I have to say for the audience. No, one, says, no one's ever said howdy, No one's ever said howdy, it's always hey. Cool. And I always just I translate it to howdy. Yep. So, just, yeah. just to make sure that that is clear, it is never <laughs> said howdy. Every time he does that, it kills me a little bit inside. Does it really? No, I don't care. Because uh, <laughs> like I'll read this and I'll I'll like. I, I know. I, I yeah, you know. I know you, you know. do it. I'll, you know, I'll interchange some stuff and just make it more. But the first time you did, it, I was like, that does not say howdy. That's not what it says. <laughs> like I don't know. You got a different script over here. Um, howdy, five guys. Uh, I hope you both are doing well. We're doing pretty good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm reaching out to you to. I'm reaching out to you as I navigate the world of credit cards and financial planning. I can help you with that. Perfect. Uh, I have a bit of a unique situation, as they usually do, uh, and would greatly appreciate the insights, our insights. Back in January of 2020, I opened a bank account. Uh, a, I'm sorry. I opened a Bank of America customized cash reward Platinum Plus card. Good Lord. That's Wait, a long that's credit a long, card. It's a long credit card. I think I have the same one, uh, with a $6,200 limit. Okay. Uh, I believe that I only have the platinum status because my account is linked to my parents as I don't meet the income requirements. Okay. Over the years, this card has become my go-to for everyday expenses thanks to its tailored cashback rewards. Recently, in March of 2023, I found myself at a Nordstrom's checkout counter where the charm of the cute cashier led me to open a Nordstrom's Credit card with a thousand dollar limit. Not thinking with your brain. Okay, I got that. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Been there. Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, I don't use this card very often. Uh, it's more of a whimsical addition to my financial portfolio, uh, secretly tucked away in a in my fire safe. I, I like how normally people will say a financial portfolio is like your investments. Yeah, so yeah. This guy's like. My credit cards yeah, yeah, yeah. are I, part of it. I thought that was so funny. That's when pretty I cool. Reddit, That's cool. Like, no, I'm not. It's not. It's not. It's, it's not, not like me. Dig. It's just cool. It's cool. Like, it's cool. It's not a dig. It's cool. Because it can't. It really can be an asset if you yeah. leverage it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna start putting stuff in the portfolio. <laughs> yeah. Um, as of now, my FICO score is a solid 770. That is very good. Nice. 
Uh, my oldest account has been active for three years and eleven months with an annual income of oh with an annual income of sixty five thousand. I've been tracking my expenses for the past year and a half and comfortably managing my expenses, which include eight hundred dollars a month for rent, four hundred dollars for dining, two hundred dollars for groceries, a hundred dollars for gas, and about six hundred dollars for miscellaneous purchases. Despite my financial comfort, thanks to a lack of debt and a healthy savings routine, I am considering exploring additional credit card options. The goal is to maximize rewards, possibly in the form of travel points, and in the long run enhance my credit score. Given my current status as a 1 of 24 in the Chase 5 of 24 lineup, remember we talked about that, mm -hmm. you guys don't remember, 5 credit cards and then opening 5 credit cards in 24 months. I'm looking for a recommendation for my next card. I've identified a specific one. I have not identified a specific one yet, uh, though it would be smart to seek advice from you two as you more you have more experience in this area. I am open to tailoring my spending habits to the benefits of a particular card or opening up a general purpose card. I would be incredibly grateful for any insights or recommendations you have. Your expertise in this matter would go a long way in helping me make an informed decision as I embark on this next chapter of my financial journey. Sincerely, an, ins <laughs> inspiring. an aspiring financial wizard on a credit card spree hoping to turn plastic into travel perks with glee. <laughs> All right, financial wizard. I love it. I love it. This is, a, this is a cool person. Man, you came to the right place. Financial you know, wizard. Uh, he's a financial wizard. He's, uh, he's got a portfolio of, I love it. of plastic. I like it. <laughs> I so it. that's awesome, man. Um, like really, really good job. You know, I I really love the diversity that we have in our audience mm -hmm. in that we've had some people who like are really getting started. Yeah. We have people like this young man who is, he's, he's He's winning the game. Like he's doing really, yeah. really well. Twenty-two years old. He's got a great credit score. He's got a good income. Good it looks income. like he's living below his means. Yeah. Um, he's doing everything right. And you know, sometimes I think like these people are atypical because mm -hmm. they're not just the average person. If you're listening to a financial podcast like ours and you're taking the time to write in, there is some selection bias. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In that you're probably a little bit ahead of the game. Yeah, that's not a normal thing to do. Yeah, it's not a normal thing yeah. to do. I didn't. I certainly didn't do that <laughs> no. when I was younger. Yeah. Um, but it's a good thing. No, it's an amazing it's thing. thing. You know I, what he's doing right now? He's spending sixty-five. He's making sixty-five thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. and it's just—it's so easy for young people, especially, to spend all of their money and more in order to keep up with their friends and what society and what social media shows them to be the right way of living. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really think you've said it before, but comparison is the thief of joy. And unfortunately, when people seek to get more and more and more, you know, you just end up getting let. You end up getting less and less. You're feeling less rewarded for everything that you get yeah you feel dead inside yeah it's 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 it's, it's not a, good it's a weird dichotomy right yeah, that you're, really like, you're trying to search for more so this young man is making sixty five thousand dollars a year that that's a very round number so i'm going to assume that's before taxes yeah, yeah, yeah um so here in arizona i don't know what part of the country you live in you your taxes since you're a single individual is going to be around thirteen thousand seven hundred ninety six dollars so that means that your net pay what you're taking home is fifty one thousand two hundred and five dollars right ish mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. So what that equates to is $4,267 a month. Based on what you said, between your rent, your groceries, your miscellaneous, all that stuff, you're only spending $2,100 in expenses. It's good. Dude, that is awesome. That means that your savings rate, if you actually are saving this money, is $2,167, meaning you have over a 50% savings rate. Yeah. That is like the driver to fire. You're, yeah. you're going to hit it in Less than 13 years, I think, yeah. if I'm correct there. Yeah. I, I don't remember the math. I'll that's solid. That up. So keep that's, those expenses low. Yeah, dude, keep those expenses low. Like, focus, I always say this, focus on what you have rather than what you don't have. Be mm -hmm. grateful for what you have rather than grateful for what you don't have, and you're just going to live an amazing life. Um, and also, before we get into like which credit card I'm going to tell you specifically, I also want to say like, good job on your credit score. A 770 for your age, um, and you have an old credit of so that means when you were 18 years old, you got your first credit card. So I know a lot of your credit score has to do with your parents co-signing and stuff, and that's awesome. My recommendation for that credit card is never close that credit card. Um, ask your parents if they're cool with you like staying on it or like de-linking it from your parents. And the reason for that is one of the biggest aspects of credit of your credit score outside of your payment history is your length of credit or your credit history. 
if you cancel that card just because like you don't want it anymore, that the longest, which currently is around four years, will go away. And mm -hmm. now it's only going to be the Nordstrom's one, which doesn't sound like you even want to keep that open. I don't know. No. Um, you should spend on that at least once a year. Like, yeah. I don't know, buy a donut on it or something like that. At least yeah. once a year to keep that active. Um, if you want to keep it, if not, go ahead and cancel it. So um, while Dom was reading that, I went ahead and pulled up five cards that we're going to talk about. We're going to kind of talk through why I like certain cards, why I don't. So one thing you said is that you really want to work on maybe using it for travel rewards. Mm -hmm. That's my game. So that's what I use all my credit cards for is travel rewards. I've never done, I have a cashback card, never use it. Um, I do have a USAA card that gives me 5% back on, on gas. I use that one. Yeah. Because 5% on back on gas is, that's it's a, nice. That's, that's a good up. deal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So first credit card that I typically recommend to people when they're getting started in travel rewards is the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. The reason I like this card is that it only has a low annual fee of $95. Right now, it has an annual bonus of, or um, an intro offer bonus of 60,000 points. And the way you get that 60,000 points is by spending $4,000 in the first three months of spend. Hmm. Based off what you said here. You could just put his expenses on it for two months. Um, well, not his, I, I doubt he could put his, his rent. rent but, unless his landlord is like really cool and is going to accept yeah. the credit card. But outside of your rent, you have $1,300 a month. So over three months, that's 3,900. Just, sp just, just spend an extra yeah. 100 bucks and you got it. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you can do something. It's the holiday season. Yeah, I'm sure you're yeah. going to be spending some extras. But that 60,000 points, I roughly equate the Chase Sapphire of Ultimate Rewards points at two cents per point. Mm -hmm. So meaning that each point I have is worth two cents. So that 60,000 points is worth $1,200 in value to me. Bingo. And how I would use that. Yeah. Um, for that credit card, you get five times the points on travel because you said you might want to want to tailor your purchases. Mm -hmm. That travel is only booked through the Chase Ultimate Rewards portal. Earlier, you asked me, do I have any ways of hacking hotels? This is one of the ways. Ooh. You also get three times the points on dining, which is huge, and then two times on all other purchases or all other travel purchases. Um, and then it's one per one point for everything else, mm -hmm. so like going to Target or whatever. Yeah. It's one point. Um, so that's a really good offer. Um, and it's a really good card. Every so often, the intro offer changes. So 60,000 is really the lower end. Mm -hmm. um, normally during during the winter time, they don't do anything. I find between March, April, May is when they usually are giving some of the best offers because that's when spending usually curtails after the holiday season and right before the summertime, people aren't spending as much during the summer, during the winter, people are spending so they don't have to offer as much to get yeah. people in the door. So that's a good card to start with. Next good card. Um, for non-bonus spending, so if you just want to like spend, have like an all-around card that you can use, yeah. I recommend the Capital One Venture Rewards card, credit card. This one again only has a ninety-five dollar annual fee, um, and right now their intro offer is seventy-five thousand for four thousand in the first three months. With Capital One, I don't; they're not as good as Chase points are, but. They inside their own ecosystem, they work really, really well. Mm -hmm. So that seventy-five thousand points, I would equate to being around thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars in value. Okay. So really good there. You get five times points for hotels and rental cars booked through Capital One, Ooh. and then two times points on everything else. Nice. So it's very nice to get the two times nice. points on anything that you book. That's sweet. Mm -hmm. God, that's sweet. I'm gonna have to save that one for later. So that's a good one. Um, the next one, I, you didn't mention a business, but I would definitely recommend this one if maybe you can start a side hustle or something like that, man. The Inc. Business Preferred Credit Card. This is the credit card that I recently got and um, other people in my life have gotten. So the intro offer for this one is actually huge. It's 100,000 points. This one has an annual fee of $95. Mm -hmm. The only thing with this one is first off, it's a business card. So first you have, you have to go through that the business thing. The other thing that's a little bit of a drawback on this one is the annual or the the, the spend limit is eight thousand dollars rather than four thousand dollars. So double the price, but you also get double the points. For this one, it is three times the point on your first hundred and fifty thousand spent through um, through travel. Mm -hmm. So three times points on travel, and then one point for everything else. So not a very great spending card, yeah. but that one hundred thousand points is worth two thousand dollars in value. Bingo. So that's really, really good. Solid. 
Next one, I would recommend, uh, this is a card that I love. This is my forever card. I don't think I'm ever gonna get rid of it. Okay. it. Is the Capital One Venture X card. This one is a little bit more of expenses. It's $400 a year, $395. Um, but this one gets you 10 times points on any hotels, rental cars, or flights booked through the Capital One portal. So you book $10,000, you get 100,000 points. That 100,000 points is worth like fifteen to $1,600. Okay. So it's a good deal. You're basically getting like 15% cash back when you ever use that card. You also get five times points on a flights book through it, and then two times points on everything else. Interesting. Um, another good thing about, the cha about this card, the reason it's my forever card, every year renewal, you get 10,000 points deposit into your account, which is equivalent to $100 in value. Okay. And you get $300 in credit, statement credits every year for travel, book through their portal. Nice. So basically the card pays you $5 a year. That's sweet. Yeah, given, That's that, you, sweet. given that you use given all of the you things. use the perks, yeah. And, and, and I do. Final one I'm gonna throw out there. Um, this is more for someone like yourself who said you don't mind curtailing your spending. Right now you said you're spending around, I don't remember, was it $200 a month in groceries? Was that right? I think that sounds right. Yeah, $200 a month in groceries, and you're also spending $400 in dining out, and then you're also $600 in miscellaneous expenses. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's also eating out and doing some fun stuff. Mm -hmm. But the Amex Gold Card has a $250 annual fee. Right now it's also offering a $60,000 bonus if you spend $3,000 in, or actually $6,000 in the first six months. Okay. So it's only a thousand a month. You'll be able to hit that really quick with your spending, but that's sixty thousand again. Just like Chase, I value that at two cents per point. So that's a fifteen hundred. That's a twelve hundred dollar value. With this one, the really nice thing about this one, um, four times points on all restaurants and takeout and delivery. Yeah. Four times points on all U.S. supermarkets. Three times points on booking directly through any airline that is a partner of Amex. So this one's gonna be like a, just a really all around good spending category. I like that. Because of how much it fits into things. Yeah. And right now, this one is 250, but as of February 1st of 2024, they're gonna be increasing the price to 375. So you can actually lock in this lower rate for another year um, before it basically doubles here mm -hmm. in, in the next few months. Nice. There are a bunch of other credit cards, but you, I don't, I don't wanna go through yeah. every single one on the list. Yeah. But those five are a really good place to start. If you're really, if I overwhelmed you, Chase Sapphire preferred, the $95 one is the way to go, I think. Yeah, that's a solid card. Yeah, that's a, that's a solid card. That was the one that I really started with and sent me down the path of all this stuff. Um, and please remember, I don't think this is gonna be an issue for you, but you have to have good financial habits when you're using a credit card and doing credit card rewards. No amount of points is worth paying 25 to 30% interest on bad financial habits. So make sure you're spending money that you were already gonna be spending. And if you are going above and beyond, go back and listen to episode two. I talked about ways to meet minimum spends that aren't gonna break the bank. Mm -hmm. And then keep up the great work. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, chris at monsandwealth.com. You can also reach out in the comments. I'd be happy to kind of point you in the right direction if you want a little bit more tailored of a solution to what you normally spend on, because $600 in miscellaneous, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Um, so maybe there we could do some more tailoring for what's gonna be more right for you specifically, but broad strokes, that's gonna be the way to go. And um, keep up the good work, man. If you continue to keep your expenses low, dude, you can be at five by the time you're, what, 30, like mid 30s, mid 30, yeah. mid 30s. 35, 35? Yeah. he said he was 22? He said he was 22, I'm gonna have to assume. 13 years. So, yeah, yeah good for him. 35, yeah. Man, yeah. be that young again. That's awesome. Let's get on to win of the week. Win of the week. Yeah. yeah. You want to, I'm going to go first. Yeah, you go first. I'm going to go first this week. So as you know, I might, uh, I'm going to be moving out pretty soon. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep costs low as possible because, you know, it's a financial channel. I'm not trying to blow all my money in the first month, right? Uh, and one of the ways I've decided to cut costs is at the dollar store. Really? The dollar, the dollar tree yeah, like down do there? The dollar tree, yeah. They have some wild stuff there. Because like, for me, like, I get all the important stuff I need, like Costco, you know, places I trust. Mm -hmm. But the stuff that like, I don't mind being like kind of cheap. It's like the dollar store. So I'm getting like plates, I'm getting bowls and probably cups as well. Okay, just don't microwave those ones. What? Don't don't microwave like the don't use those in the microwave. Really? Yeah, they have weaker plastic. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, well I won't get the cups. Oh no, the cups are Oh, no, don't put don't put hot water in them. Really? Yeah. In the cups? 
I probably wouldn't. Okay, well, I'll skip the cups. If they're plastic, I wouldn't. I think that, no, they're like mugs. Oh, then they're ceramic. Yeah, they're ceramic. So, like, I, so I'm getting, like, all ceramic plates and stuff like that. And it's nice because it's, like, I can get, like, plates, bowls, and, like, I can, I can get, like, my dishware set for, like, 20 bucks. Nice. Super cheap. It's, like, such a it's such a Spartan way to, like, live, too. I, just, I love, like, I love just, like, spending a little bit of money and getting a lot out of it. You should really check out that Nella site that I told you about, the auction site. I did see that. Yeah. yeah. I've been on there a few times, yeah. Yeah, they got some good stuff. They I've been checking stuff. every day to find a better, a, a bigger deep freezer for my cold plunge. Oh my gosh, he's back on the cold plunge. What's but, your win of the week? Um, my win of the week, um, just keeping in, in line with this, a lot of people I feel when I say sign up for a business credit card, they just get like, I'm not gonna, this is this is too much, it's scary, yeah. I don't know how to do it. It is scary. Um, even for my wife, I've been telling her like, you need to open up a business credit card. And she's like, no, I don't really have a business. Like you have businesses. I'm like, I'll name you as like, like, yeah, I'll name you as as, as a co-founder of one of my businesses. I don't I don't care. Yeah. Um, I even started a business for her that she didn't want. Um, yeah. We can always have dreams for them to be business owners. I know. I, I started it. I, I even made her a logo. I made her a business card. Oh, I made her a website. Really? I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's kind of ridiculous. But, I'll um, ask off the pod. Yeah, you guys off the pod. But yeah, I made her. I made her a website. But she didn't want it. She didn't want to pursue it. So I told her like you need to start opening these business credit cards because yeah. in 2025 we're planning a trip to Kenya. Mm -hmm. We really want to go to Africa. We want to do a safari trip. Mm -hmm. I thought that'd be super, super cool. So my wife, uh, just two days ago, she applied for the Chase Business Inc. Preferred Card, the one I just recommended a little mm -hmm. while ago mm -hmm. to, our, yeah. to, our, to our friend. To our friend. To our wizard friend. To our wizard friend. Yes. Um, so the way that she was able to do that, my wife is a veterinarian, but she went and she put sole proprietor, and then she put that she does dog care on the side because what we do is we have some friends, and we, you know we have a bunch of dogs. Our friends have a bunch of cats. So whenever we leave, we pay our gal from Rover to watch our animals, but every so often things go wrong. So we ask our friends to watch our animals. So we'll pay them. And then when they need somebody, they pay us. So it's really just an exchange of money. Like I'll yeah. give them $200 and they'll give me that $200 yeah, back eventually. Yeah. But that's a viable business. Mm -hmm. So my wife said that she is a veterinarian that also does pet care. I love it. So love she it. opened up her own business. She opened up her own like fake business, no LLC, nothing like that. She just went in there, put in her social security number, and now she has the Chase Business Inc. Once we get that, we're gonna put some spending on it for Christmas time. So we're actually gonna hold off on buying mm -hmm. some stuff. And I know we're getting really close to Christmas, so we gotta like yeah, we gotta run it. Get on it. We gotta run it. As soon as it gets here, here in the next few days, we're gonna go ahead and start buying some stuff, um, and then we'll hit that. That's gonna be a hundred thousand points. And with that, we believe we're gonna be able to fly to Kenya on business class through Emirates, since we're not gonna do Ooh. Emirates for Japan, since Emirates doesn't fly to Japan, unless you go to Dubai first, which we decided was like, it just- it That's a long- It didn't make sense. Yeah, it didn't make sense. No. Yeah, so we're just gonna fly a different way to get to Japan next yeah. year. Are you gonna go from like Hawaii to Japan? Or do you go- Oh, uh, we're gonna go to LAX. Oh, okay. We're gonna LAX to Japan. That makes sense. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, we booked- yep. That's super cool. Yeah. I love that. I we've, love been, that. we've been really going hard into the- You know, it's really funny that like this podcast, well, some of this stuff like almost seems basic to me because I've been doing this for so long. Just revisiting a lot of these parts and teaching it again mm -hmm. um, has really like leveled up my game yeah. and try to look for like new ways to yeah. help out myself. Mm -hmm. That way I can bring it to the audience. And like, yeah. I'd never want to say do something without testing it myself. Definitely. I mean, they always say like the final stage of knowing a topic wholly is to teach it. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. And I always find that like uh, an expert in a subject is someone that did everything wrong and now can tell you what not to do. Bingo. And I have done so many things Bingo. wrong and I just want to make sure that like I share my knowledge so you don't have to go through the school of hard knocks like I did. Perfect. I think that's it for today's podcast. Yeah, that really is. Um, so guys, Southwest Rewards, um, credit cards, companion pass, yep. Southwest is the best. Yeah, it really is. It really, it's a wild card. I hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. And don't forget the fee for the show. Fee for the show. If you guys found any value, if it made me laugh, I hope we did today. Please tell one friend about the Five Guys. And until next week, we'll see you later. Peace. This video podcast is sponsored by Mons on Wealth. The content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. We do not endorse specific products or services. Past performance does not guarantee future results. The opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests, not the podcast sponsor. It is crucial to consult with a qualified financial advisor or professional who can provide advice tailored to your specific needs before making any financial decisions, investments, or taking any other actions. If you are seeking specified help, you can reach out to Chris at monsonwealth.com.